Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. This is Hariharna. In this video, I'll guide you step by step on how to set up Raspberry Pi 5 with Raspberry Pi OS for the first time in a headless approach. So you don't need any external monitor, keyboard and mouse for this purpose. So stay tuned until the end of this video to get all the steps right. So let's get started with the steps. First, we'll look into hardware prerequisites. The first is HD card, which is 32 GB or higher, SD card reader, a computer, Raspberry Pi with its power cable and Ethernet cable. Now, you need to insert the SD card onto the SD card reader and then plug it in the USB drive of your computer. Now, we can look into software components that are required. So, if you go to the Raspberry Pi software, here you can see you need to first install Raspberry Pi Imager. So, you can click on download for Windows and it will download. Once you have downloaded, you can click on install. I have already installed. So, I'll just search for Raspberry Pi and Imager would be appearing. I'll click on that app. You can see this user interface. Once you see this interface, you can select the Raspberry Pi device, Raspberry Pi 5. So once you have selected Raspberry Pi, you need to select the operating system. You can select Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. So as I can see, Raspberry Pi 64 bit is also a recommended approach. I'll use that. And if you wanted to see the Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit installation, then you can click on the top right corner. So where you can see my previous video, I have mentioned how to use the Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. So now 64 bit and select the storage. Once you have inserted your SD card, you should be able to see here. And you can select that and click on next. Now it is asking you, would you like to apply OS customization settings? Then we should say edit settings. So it is going to give us the host name Raspberry Pi and the Pi, the password you need to change. You can keep your own password and it has already taken my previous cache. What is the username, password and Wi-Fi, SSID password and all those things. And that's why Otherwise, you need to enter all of these. Once you have entered all of these, you can go to services and mention enable SSH and use the password authentication. And remaining things, you can keep it as it is and click on save. Then click on yes. It will say it will erase all the existing data. You can say yes. So it will take five to 10 minutes for completion of this. I'll fast forward this step. Now, once the write is successful, you can see this pop up and you can click on continue. So once this is done, you can eject your USB. Once this micro SD card reader is removed, you can remove the SD card from the SD card reader and insert onto the Raspberry Pi. And then you need to connect the Raspberry Pi to the adapter for the power source. And then now I can connect my Ethernet cable to my Raspberry Pi to the computer. So one more software that you need is Putty. So you need to download Putty. So you can go to Putty in Google and you should be able to download Putty and I have already downloaded Putty so you can search for Putty here and what you can do is in the host name you need to type raspberry pi dot local and click on open. So right now it is not able to detect it. We should wait for a few seconds. So after a few seconds, I can again type raspberry pi dot local. So for the first few seconds, it might not connect. It will say host not available because raspberry pi might be loading up. Now after a few seconds, you can retry and you should see this warning, which means that 
Raspberry Pi has been loaded and you can click on accept so that you can see this login screen. So I'll try to open putty in such a way that it can be the font size can be increased. Open putty type Raspberry Pi go to the window so you can select the change the font size only when maximized click on ok now you can see the size got increased and you can give the username as pi and the password now immediately you can see it has got logged in and your time also is mentioned i can use cat slash etc os release you should see it is using debian version 12 bookworm and also on the top you can see what is the linux raspberry pi version and all the details like architecture 64 everything is mentioned here now we can also check whether we have vnc available or not so you can use vnc server and it will say these options are available so what we can do use uh, use one of these options to start the vnc i'll use a service mode here and it is asking password so authentication is complete so in the meanwhile what we can do is we can go to our browser and search for vnc viewer so you need to download this vnc viewer and install it so you can click on real vnc viewer and once you download it you can install it so now i can open vnc viewer and search for raspberry pi dot local type it here and click on enter we should click on continue it will ask for password and right now it is showing cannot currently show the desktop because we are getting error which means that vnc is not enabled in the settings so we need to go to sudo raspi hyphen config and go to interface settings in the vnc you need to enable it first so now it is enabled you can search for vnc server and go to this virtual d mode enter the password now we can go to the vnc viewer and type raspberry pi dot local and enter now we can see pi and you can enter the password so you should see the desktop and even the ip address is given here so another way that you can open instead of ethernet is search for if config and in the wlan 0 you will be having this ip address so you need to copy this go to putty again paste this and click on open so immediately using wi-fi you are able to log in to the raspberry pi same way you can use the vnc you can paste the ip address here and you can also log in here like this so now we have connected using both raspberry pi ethernet as well as wi-fi that's all for today's video i hope this video was helpful if yes please type helpful in the comment section below your support means a lot to us and helps us keep creating more content like this so please subscribe to the channel and like this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another interesting video.